Hello again. Hello, my name is Amira Zidane, and today I will be talking about stream and innovation. How stream leads to innovation and creativity. I think all of you know what is STEM or STEAM is. STEAM is an educational approach that combines science, technology, engineering, math, and art. Adding letter R, it's gonna be STREAM, which is very important skill nowadays, the reading and digital literacy. I have graduated from um, the Faculty of Computer Science and Information Systems, but I chose to be in the educational field because I love being a teacher. Notice that I didn't say I like being a teacher, but I say that I love being a teacher. It's a big difference. When you love something, it's not like I like something. So, when I was a student, um, our teachers, God bless them, they used to teach us in a traditional way, the old style, I call it that way. The teachers give us the information and we absorb that information, memorize, understand, do the tasks and pass, alhamdulillah. But when I became a teacher, I said that I don't want to just give the students the information. I wanted it to be in a creative way. I wanted them to seek for my class. I wanted them to come and say, we need Miss Amira's class. We want to be in your class because you teach the way that we need. We want or we are coming to your class because we are having fun while we are learning in your class. I searched the internet about different ways and different methodologies. Then I found the stream approach. Stream makes the student adapt their mindset and be creative and problem solvers. I'm not here to give you theories or something like that. I'm a teacher for 15 years old and I have enough practices to share with you. One of my practices that last year I had two students in grade 12. They were very careless. They don't attend our classes or not my classes only, any of the teacher's classes. Careless, coming to school late, um, just come for fun and then leave. I wanted them to attend my class because they want that. So one day they come to the class and we were working on a stream project. That project includes or included NFTs and cryptocurrency. It was a new topic to me, but I opened it with the students. So some of them told me, Miss, those two students are very good in that and they are outstanding in that topic. I said, hmm, really? Those students can know something or do something? Then I asked them, please come here and introduce the topic to your peers and to me as well. They started to talk about NFT, cryptocurrency, Bitcoins. They showed me some amazing NFT drawings. They showed me some applications I never knew about. They are trading over the internet with Bitcoins and I was really impressed. At that time, I found their key to make them attend my class and be outstanding in my class. I told them, we will make a deal. You teach me what you are knowing and I will teach you my subject, which is the computer science. They said, okay, deal. Then they started attending all my classes. They didn't miss them. And they started even coming to my class during the break time to teach me about NFT and cryptocurrency. At the end of the course, they did very well. They passed the subject with not a very high grade, but at least they did very well in the subject. And of course, I learned a lot from them. And guess what? One of them now is studying about cybersecurity. So we have different, or the students have different abilities. Not all of them can read or write or do math well 
or even do ICT or whatever. They are different. If you are in a KG class or you have like um, son or daughter, they are in KG, if you give them a math uh, problem, maybe they will not be able to solve it. Maybe some of them will be able to solve it. Maybe some of them will be able to read or write, but not all. But for the same students, if you give them a puzzle to solve, they will try their, their best to solve this puzzle. They will try even to find creative and innovative ways for solving it. Same applies to middle, high, and even elementary students. If they are in a normal math class, if they are in a normal science class, some of them will do good and some of them will not be very good in that. But if you combine science, technology, math, reading, literacy in one topic under one theme and you let them do things by themselves, they will do very well. And this is, I already talked about one of the examples. I have another example about one of my students in grade seven. This student was um, not a very low achiever, but he was, he was one or he is one of the SE and D students. He has difficulties in reading. He has difficulties in writing. He cannot do math well. And he is a troublemaker in the class. And I think you all know why he is a troublemaker. He cannot understand what the teachers are saying or what the teachers are teaching them. Then, um, we had a project, a robotics competition, with middle school students, and they were practicing for more than two months for this competition in after school class. Those students, before the competition day, I asked them to, or I told them that we will make a rehearsal in front of each one in the school to make them more confident and to make them be in the mood of the competition day. So, they started working in front of each, everyone. This is a student that I told you, he is one of the SE and D students and he cannot do well in the class. He came and, tell me, and told me, Miss, please, I want to join this. I told them, oh, unfortunately you cannot because the competition is one week after and those students already practiced for more than two months. You will not be able to do it with them. He said, no, miss, I don't want to join the competition, but I want to learn what they are learning. I want to do what they are doing. I told him, really? You want to learn this? You want to learn something? He said, yes, I will be very good in that. I told him, but all the teachers are like complaining about you. You're not sitting in the class. He said, I'm not interested in the normal thing that they are telling me, even the ICT period. But when you give me a robot, I will be perfect in that. I told him, I will see. Then I let him join a robotics club. And really, he did very well in this club. He started to do problem solving. He started to solve problems that others cannot do. And he started to make amazing designs with the robot. And by the way, he started to learn math because he needs to know the calculations of his robot. He started to read and research and do research on the internet because he needs to know different ways of solving his problem. He started to learn science and problem solving and design uh, process. So because he wanted to do this and because he wants to learn this, he started to learn other things that it was not easy for him before to learn. As I told you, why stream and not anything else? Stream is adapting the mindset of our students and making them creative and innovative. It makes the low achiever student and turns them into a high achiever students. It takes a lazy student, a careless student into someone that needs to learn. If you are teaching the students in a normal classroom, a science classroom or an ICT classroom or a math classroom, they're just, or the teachers at that point are like,
just giving the information to the students, students absorbing the information, it's like a treatment. As long as you are taking the uh, treatment or that medicine, you will be good. But this is not the 21st century skills that we need our students to have. The 21st century skills are the creativity, the innovation, the problem solving, the leadership, the entrepreneurship, all of these skills are very, very important for our students. Now it's not just getting high marks and go to the medicine. Everyone now can search the information and find it very easily on the internet. But now it's a competitive market. We need the students to be the leaders of the futures. And this is how STREAM can do to our students. It really can lead to creativity and innovation. Thank you.